Ladies, gentlemen, beings of ascended consciousness, salutations and welcome to the Attack of the B-Team Mod Pack. I am your host, Dapper Demon, and in this installment, I will be showing you how to use the Darwin mobs that are in this pack. So, let me just pop on my educational monocle here, and without further ado, we can begin. Now, you've probably seen some of these guys walking around. They're disgustingly hideous, and if you're like me, you've likely seen them and... Your immediate thought was, good lord, what is that thing? Kill it before it lays eggs. Which is kind of ironic, because breeding these things is exactly what we want to do, but I'll get to that later. Now, let's start off with the basics. We're going to cover exactly what kind of mods there are, and what kind of mobs there are, and what they drop first. So, we've got the pigs here. As you can probably guess, they drop pork chops upon death. Which, you know, it's not too big of a deal, you can get regular pigs for that. Whatever. Zombies. These guys are pretty difficult to catch because, like real zombies, they do burn in sunlight. So if you want a bunch of these guys, what I'd recommend is either going out to an ice plains biome at night, which is, I'm, uh, as far as I can tell, they spawn mostly in those in ice plains biomes, and just grabbing a few before the sun comes up. Here on our right, we have the Pikachus which are one of two Pokemon-themed creatures in this mod. And if you're curious as to why there are Pokemon in this, it's because the creator of this mod and the creator of the Pokemobs mod is the same person, and I guess they sort of threw this in as an Easter egg. Now on the left here, we have cows. Again, fairly easy to get normally. They drop raw beef and leather, but uh, regular cows seem to drop leather more often. I forgot to cover what these guys drop. Rotten Flesh and Redstone, which I guess makes sense, you know, because Pikachu is an electric Pokemon, and Redstone is the electricity of Minecraft, pretty much. So, moving on. Endermen. These guys will drop Ender Pearls upon death, which is very useful because, as many of the people on the official Attack of the B-Team server have noted, Endermen are hard to come by unless you have an Ominous Woods biome that you can raid for Endermen. On the left here, we have slimes. Again, very useful because, as people have noted, slime balls, regular green slime balls, are kind of difficult to come by. Usually they can be substituted through the ore dictionary with pink slime balls or blood from Seeker's Construct, but, you know, some sometimes that doesn't work, so you need a good old-fashioned green slime ball. You can grow the trees from Seeker's Construct mod, but it's, it's, it's more satisfying to kill something for your your items, to me, personally. And over here we have Squirtles. Their drop is kind of odd, and I'm not exactly sure of the logic behind this, but they drop Iron Shovels, usually two or three upon death. Which actually can be extremely useful, because in the Tinker's Construct mod, again, you can melt down any iron tools or any other ore into its ore state. So every time you throw an Iron Shovel into the smeltery, it will give you one Iron Ingot back. So... Let's uh, head back to the beginning here, and cover the breeding aspect of this. Now, the great thing about this mod is every creature here breeds with wheat, which is why I have a bunch of it with me. These guys will follow you if you have wheat, which means if you want to breed pigs, you don't have to have a carrot farm next to your wheat farm and all that good stuff. You just use wheat. These guys breed with wheat. It's awesome. Everything breeds with wheat. Zombies, you can breed your own rotten flesh, and these guys don't attack you, so it's easier than hunting for zombies. Now, granted, zombies are pretty common, so you're not exactly hurting for rotten flesh in this mod pack. Usually you have a few hundred just lying around, and it's not too useful, so, you know. But still, it's there. It's an option. Just to know that you have that option makes it awesome. These guys, you can breed them for redstone. So, you know, if you don't have a witch farm set up, or you don't want to clog your system with glass bottles and sticks, you can just mass breed these guys, get a bunch of redstone. Again, you're going to want a normal cow farm, probably, if you need a lot of leather, but if you're just really hungry and want to dry yourself some of this delicious beef jerky, you can just breed some of these guys, get some raw beef. And here we get to the real usefulness of this, because, you know, as I've said, slime balls and ender pearls, very difficult to come by, unless... You have an ominous woods biome, or are breeding your own endermen and slimes. Now let me show you how this works. Grab a couple of Savari balls here. We're going to bring a couple of these guys out because occasionally you get a mutation in the child, and 
frankly, that's not pretty, and if you keep going with that mutation and accidentally kill one of the parents instead of the uh, child, you can mess up your farm. So, let's give these guys... Some, wait, whoops, wrong button. Let's give these guys some wheat. And as you can see, they'll get busy... Oh, nice uh, ambient thing there. They'll get busy and create a hideous little pixelated cube, baby. So, throw these guys back in their pen. Where are you going? Yes, and unlike real Endermen, these guys can't teleport away, as you can probably guess. So, that makes it much easier to kill them. So we'll wait for this little guy to grow up, and that's that's another great thing about why you might want to have these instead of regular mobs, even between, between the cows and the pigs, because these guys grow up extremely fast. If you're breeding, if you've ever, ever bred your own cows and pigs and chickens and whatnot, it takes a while. After you feed them, it takes a five minute cooldown for them to be able to breed again. And the babies just, I think they take around 20 minutes to grow up. And look, this guy's already grown up while I was explaining that to you. That was really quick. I think it's only about a minute. And as soon as the baby that's produced grows up, the parents are able to breed again, which makes this really easy. As you can see, there's kind of, I think there's a bit of a mutation here. His coloration's a little off. He's redder than the parents are. But we're just going to kill him. And hopefully, oh, he'll, yep, there we go. See? Dropped some ender pearls. Oh, that's a bit of a downside to this, which we'll get to later. So let me just transform back into a bat here. And let me see, what have I covered? Covered the basic explanation, covered the types and drops, covered the usefulness, and now we're at crossbreeding. And this is where I think Paul Soares Jr., if you're watching this, I probably linked it to your channel at some point. But this is where I think this will be really useful to you. And it's a really interesting aspect of this mod. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Not one of these. I am going to grab a Pikachu. And I am going to grab... An Enderman. And let's see what happens here. Now, if you're like me, you've probably never wondered... What will happen if you breed a Pikachu with an Enderman? You know, it's just not something people commonly wonder about. But hey, you can do it. So, let's feed these guys. Get their uh, hideous little pink stripey cube baby here. Pop them back in their pens. Throw the Enderman back in here. And throw the Pikachu back in with his brothers and sisters and cousins here. We won't get into the... Uh, moral problems about mass breeding in Minecraft and, you know, general, it's just kind of gross to think about. But let's, let's just wait for this guy to grow up, and while we're doing that, I'll just uh, fly around a little bit. Actually, while we're doing that, I can cover some of the conflicts of this, so move on to that. Now, as you can see, I have surrounded every single one of these mobs in a giant glass case. Oh, there we go, we have our, our baby here. Well, let's get to that in a minute. So yeah, there's, there's a reason for that, and it's one, to make sure I check for mutations, because especially with the slimes here, sometimes it's kind of difficult to tell if they've grown legs because they hang under the floor and you can't really see it. And another reason, again, with the slimes mostly, is that these creatures have a tendency to sort of embed themselves in the walls and suffocate to death. It's a really nasty habit. It's I've tried to break them of it, but they're just impossible to train, so uh, yeah, I've, I just figured I'd surround them in glass, and it just makes things much easier for me. So, there's the first conflict. Another thing, the uh, with the morph mod, as you've seen before, these things have different NBT data for pretty much every single time you breed them. So, since the morph mod goes by NBT data for different types of creatures, it uh, kind of makes it difficult to sort through your system sometimes. As you can see, my uh, system here has gotten pretty clogged up. So, if you want, you can go through and delete a bunch of these, or just completely ignore it. But, it's a lot of creatures, and every single time you kill one of these, you're going to get a new morph. So, yeah. That gets a bit annoying. 
Sorry about that, my recording equipment cut out and I didn't realize it. Back to what I was saying. Now, as I covered already, Enderman, Pikachu, adorable, adorable abomination, the eyes of gods and man. Which can be useful to us later. But first of all, this is why I think Paul Soares Jr. should get interested in this mod, because he's mentioned that he's going with an Island of Dr. Moreau theme, and sort of a Frankenstein theme along with that. But the thing about the island of Dr. Moreau is he uses crossbreeding to create a lot of his uh, monstrous abominations. And, well, you know, that's what's going on here, as opposed to stitching pieces of creatures together and bringing them to life with the power of science, or in this case, dark magic. So you can mix-match these guys with actual genetics instead of dark magic. And it makes it a lot more accurate to the storyline he's going for. Plus, you know, you can create some pretty cool combinations. You get some mutations going on, and you can get one with ocelot-looking skins, and creeper-looking skins, and it's really pretty cool once you spend a few hours or so in this. But there's another reason to spend some time in this, and I'll get to that now. Down here I have my auto-spawner room. And you can also use this to mass breed these guys without getting the uh, genetic defects that you might get sometimes, so it makes it a lot easier to harvest. Also, you know, since you're killing something with the exact same NBT data every time, you're not ending up with a bunch of things clogging up your morph mod menu. So let's just pop this guy in here. You do want to have spawn exact copy on, unless you're trying to catch a different type, because if you don't have it on, it'll just choose randomly between each of the uh, seven basic types here. So let me just grab a bucket of uh, mob essence here, dump that in there, and let him spawn. And the great thing about breeding, crossbreeding these guys is sometimes you'll get really rare drops out of it. Most of the time it just drops one or both of the things its parents drop, but sometimes like you'll get things like blaze rods or gas tears, which I've gotten a couple times but uh, forgot to... Oh, these guys don't even drop anything. That's an... That's embarrassing. Let me try that again real quick. But as I was saying, sometimes you get blaze rods and gas tears and things like that that are really awesome that make it so I wouldn't have to go in the nether anymore if I had remembered to use the auto spawner to test this out instead of just killing them to see what they drop. Okay, that guy drops an ender pearl. That's, that's not too interesting. But yes, you want to keep some of those guys around. You can mass, mass breed them for other stuff. Like, uh... I believe it was the zombie and the, definitely the squirtle was in there, that I crossbred, and what they dropped was three minecarts furn with furnaces, which I don't know what that would be useful for, but hey, if you ever want a ton of minecarts with furnaces, that's the route to go. It's just amazing what you can do with these things if you put a little time into it. So I've covered the auto spawner, I covered crossbreeding briefly there. So, that's, um, I guess that about covers the usefulness of this mod. Oh, also, as with any other creature that's not vanilla, if you scrape these guys and breed their genes, it's always a basic gene, which can be really useful for breeding genes that are kind of rare. Real quick, I've got to throw this little bit of information in here because I forgot to cover it, and it's really useful, and it's kind of a blessing and a curse depending on what you're doing with these mobs, but uh, every single one of these guys will attack hostile mobs. So you might have seen it if you're flying around at night. These guys will attack zombies and skeletons and witches and all that. I don't know if they attack zombie pigmen and imps, so Pulsors Jr., if you are watching this, might want to be wary about that and keep these guys away from... Uh, Ziggy and whatever the other guy's name was, because they could end up killing them. But yeah, it's it's really useful. Personally, that's what I'm going to be doing with these things, is I'm going to mass breed a cool cross-breeded creature, something that I think looks awesome, and dump it all over this island, which if you can see in the top right corner of the map there, I live on an island. I'm going to take away all the lighting I've placed down, plant a bunch of trees, and throw a bunch of hits, crossbred baboon creatures around here. Personally, I think it's gonna look pretty cool. But yeah, so I guess that about covers that. 
So I guess uh, that about covers everything. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. This is my first time recording Minecraft, and only the fourth video I've ever posted on YouTube, so... Uh, yeah, if, if you enjoyed this, please leave a like or a comment, and if you really enjoyed it, you can subscribe, and I may do something in the future. You know, like, uh, maybe I'll make a survival series out of Attack of the B-Team, I'll start a new world, of course, even though I'm kind of attached to this one. And, yeah, so possibly see you next time, or not, if... if that's the case. Either way, thank you for watching again, and farewell.